everyone welcome back to my channel and welcome the newcomers i hope you like what you see and if so be part of this journey by hitting that subscription button it's free and hit the bell notification to be notified of the new uploads i would just like to mention that if the video is a little bit too fast for you up top there's three little buttons you can click there and slow down the video to the speed you'd like also right next to it there's the cc uh, letters for closed caption you can turn that on and you can read all the stitch that I'm calling down here by pausing the video take notes will make it easier for you now normally when I upload um, the videos it takes about an hour for YouTube to uh, search all my words that I'm saying so it can appear on the closed caption so don't panic if you don't see right away the closed captions because the video has just been launched it will show up in about a half an hour to an hour after the upload. I also would like to mention that if you have extra yarn, extra thread, and you'd like to help the women in need, we highly appreciate it and being very, very grateful for it. Thank you for the ones that already have helped and are still helping. If you'd like to donate right below the video, there's a little bag of dollar sign you can donate whatever amount you'd like. Nobody's asking for millions, anything helps. It adds up at the end. Uh, you can also go into the description box. My PayPal account is there. You can donate through there if you'd like also. Please always give a thumbs up on the video if you like the video. It does help the video to circulate and also uh, to be recognized worldwide. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's one way to help me out and to help to continue to create these beautiful pieces. Um, also share on your Facebook public. It costs nothing. It's everything is free. There's no charge of anything. So please help out to grow the channel. I do have a Facebook group, a uh, private group. If you have a profile, you're more than welcome to uh, request to be a member. It's free, of course, and uh, we'll approve you. You must have a profile. Be careful with the links that you go into the groups that says cut and bit. These are fraud uh, scammers that go through your phones, your computers, and take every information of yours. Do not open up those links. There's a lot of hackers in the groups now. That's why I made sure that my group is private. I want to thank every single one of you from the start uh, being with me, and uh, thank you so much for the newcomers. It costs nothing to subscribe, so please do so. Thank you so much, everybody. Everything will be listed always in the description box for every pattern that I create, the sizes, the thread that I use, which is Portugal thread. They're 100% cotton thread, four ply, which is similar to Aunt Lydia. Number three, which num number three Aunt Lydia is just a little bit thicker than my thread, not by much, but a little bit. I usually use a hook three or 3.5, a small one for tucking in loose ends and a pair of scissors, of course. So thank you, everybody. Uh, any other questions, suggestions, please feel free to uh, comment. You can always get a hold of me if your intentions are to uh, give some thread or yarn away. There's my email below the description box. There's my Facebook page that you can follow also, my Facebook group, my Instagram, my TikTok. So there's so many ways you can message me. Thank you so much, everybody. I hug every single one of you and much blessings to all of you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, everyone, so we're going to create the ears for the mini mouse. Now, on the tutorial, you will see there's pink. I had created pink, and I think in a way it's better for you to see the stitch. I mean, not that it's complicated, but still, I think you can see it better than the black. So I had created pink, and then I decided uh, once it was done, no, I took it all down and went just with the black, which pink was just perfect for the tutorial. But anyway, so you will see it uh, in pink and then the last row, because this has four rows, the last row I had created black. So I took it all down and went um, with just black. Another thing is um, on my, so on the centerpiece, on the pink one, I had created 16 double crochets. On this one, I created only 12, okay? I went a little bit smaller, but if you want to go bigger, you can create uh, more double crochets, 16, 18, 20. It's up to you. I did uh, 
on the tutorial 16, which it became huge. And on this one, I did uh, 12 double crochets only. So if you want to create this size, then you can go ahead and do only 12. This has 22, I believe, centimeters. Yes, 22 centimeters, which is perfect because once I've put it on top of the pattern, I noticed it was just perfect enough. Okay, so please don't forget to give a thumbs up on the video. Share the video. It's very important. I also would like to mention that pay attention um, on the tutorial of the uh, the uh, years. I leave five space out. Okay, so I do my double crochets as you will see, and then I don't do my last five. One, two, three, four, five. We need this to be sewed on to the pattern for the years. Okay. Thank you, everyone. This is very easy to do the magic circle. So I got to give it enough length because it's a very thick thread and we need all the space that we can get inside of the circle. Or you do a 8 to 10 chain. Okay. So I'm going up chain two because it's so thick normally I do chain three inside of this magic circle I'm going to do 16 double crochets total with the chain two that I went up and I'm so used to working with thinner thread that with this thick one it's like oh my goodness but it makes a beautiful rug okay so 16 double crochets so I've done my 16. I'm going to come on my second chain here. And I know it's hard because I have a, a very tight stitch. So even to get this through on my first one is just hard. So we're going to close it in with a slip stitch. And I'm going to pull this thread a bit. And we need to close this center as much as we can. And then at the end, we'll put a, a, a needle through and go in because the hook is too big to go in through that tight space. So we're going to go up one and two chain. And I'm saying two. Normally I do three. But because this is very thick, I'm doing only a two in the same space. We're going to do another double crochet so we're gonna to have to do two double crochets per space and we should have a total of 32 double crochet if I can get my hook through it because my stitch is so tight that the first rows are always very hard for me no matter which pattern I am doing and I'm sure you probably go through the same thing so two per space and of course it's much easier when I have uh, crocheting it with up my chest and not let my arms stretch out for filming right so it makes it a little bit more hard for me but only on this first uh, second row I should say of any pattern okay so two per space we're gonna have a total of 32 I'll meet you at the end. Okay, you guys, so I've come to the first one where I did the two chains. I've closed in with a slip stitch. I'm going to go up again, chain two. This is my third row. I'm only doing four rows. And then the last row is single crochets. Okay, so two together again on the same space. Next space, I'm going to do one alone. And the next space also one alone. So um, one alone, next space, two together. And this makes beautiful doilies also. If using uh, Aunt Lydia number three or number ten just a centerpiece once we get to it. By the way, the centerpiece will be created the same way. 
So these years are in the same way as the centerpiece to start off the rug. So one along, two together. We're going to do this all the way around. Must have been close to some other threads when it, I guess, was shipped or something to the company. Okay, two together, one along, two together, one along, two together, one along, and we're going to proceed that way all the way around, and we're going to close with a slip stitch on the last one. Okay, you guys, so I've closed in with a slip stitch. I'm just going to pull my thread right through, and I've cut my thread already, and I'm just going to grab a needle, and I'm going to so the rest of the stitch in so that's why I've cut it a little bit more longer just to get my my thread through so I'm just going to come back and forth into this and then after I'll hot gun glue it at the end then I'm going to turn around and I'll be doing the same thing with that one too and I'm just going to just pull it in through here through some of the loops back here like that just pull it through And then cut the excess off and whatever excess you have left. Try to see if I can just pull at least one more through here. Now, because there's so many threads and it becomes very thick, it's kind of a little bit hard. That's why you have to use a, a needle to sew it on. But the more you put through the loops, the safer it is because it, you know, the thread is very thick thread, so. I think I should be okay now. Okay, and then cut the excess off, and then I'm going to glue afterwards this little edge right into the pattern like that. And then you would do the same thing with the middle one here if you're doing the magic circle. You would just put it in through the loops. Okay, you guys, I pretty much sewed into my loops, so now we're all safe and secure. I'm going to come in with the black now. So, so now I'm going to do my fourth row with the black. And I know black is hard to see, but this is very easy to do because it's the same procedure as this one. Two together, but I'm using back loops only. If you want to use front loops, that's fine. Go ahead. I'm going to use back loop only. I'm going to do a single in one chain. I'm coming back in the same space and I'm doing another double crochet. Now we're going to have two alone and two together. Next space. One double crochet alone. Got to make sure I grab all my, my thread here. Next space, one along again. And then the following space, two together. I'm trying to hide my thread at the same time as much as I can. Okay, so back loops only, two together, two along. 
two together, two along, one per space. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, you guys, so I'm pretty much at the end. And if I count from here, I have one, not counting, of course, our, our single, our two chain, right? Our single two chain. So one space, two, three, four, five. I'm on my sixth. Okay, so in reality, we have five free ones. I should maybe explain myself better, right? So I'm on my sixth one. One, two, three, four, five out. Okay, now I'm going to leave um, a bit of string. doesn't take much, but we need a bit to sew. So I'm just going to cut like that much. We need to sew it onto the pattern. Okay, so I, there's four rows all together, and we leave five of them of spaces out we don't do to stitch it on okay so the it's the same thing i just had to recreate all over again uh, same stitch as the pink one okay okay everyone so i was editing my video and noticed that the beginning of the bow tie video recording is gone as usual, time to time, these apps seems to be eating the videos that we create. Thank God I was just, you know, on the moment of editing the recordings together in order to upload the video and to throw it out there to YouTube. So the first part is missing. And thank God I saw that because I was running through the videos to see if everything was okay and all together. And uh, noticed that the beginning which is very simple, the bow tie, right? Uh, but the beginning is missing. So on this uh, bow tie, I'm going to give you the size. This is a big one because my rug is big, but if you're making like a, a doily or a smaller rug um, with thinner thread or yarn, you don't need a size this big. This is very thick thread, so it's very big. I'm looking for my measuring tape. Good gun. Just had it here. I don't know. Oh, here it is. So this is 32, 32 centimeters. It's very big. So if you want to go smaller, you're just going to cut down on the chain. So normally what you do is you're supposed to put your ears together to get the right measurement. So obviously this part will be sewed into the pattern, right? And this is going to... So this is going to go like on here like that. I know it's kind of hard to see now, but okay. So this is going to go like that. So what you do is you want to measure maybe, um, put this straight like that. Maybe you want to measure how big you want to go into in the pattern if you want your bow tie to stick out more maybe it's best if I do it this way if you want your bow tie to stick out more or to stick out in you can measure it and then take it from there and see what's best for you um, I still don't know how many I guess I'll get to that when I'm on the tutorial for the centerpiece so I'm just gonna demonstrate it so this one I have 24 um, chain stitch but since this is a, a demonstration, you could go 20, you can go 18, depending on the size you would like, the length of the bow tie. I think 24 is too big, so you'd best probably go with uh, 20. Okay. My God, that's a big difference using the other one to this one. So slip stitch knot, and let's say you're going to do 20 chain stitch. So this is very simple. I have six rows on there it's only double crochet one per space and you're just going to work back and forth on it so let's say i'm just doing a demonstration here so you're going to do your 20 double crochet and then you're going to come one two three on your fourth space you're going to come down And you're going to do one double crochet per space. So 
so nothing to it this is just a demonstration i'm doing here because i don't know what happened to that recording time to time these apps it seems like they eat up the recordings and throw it away and there's no way of finding it it's unbelievable and then it's not very pleasant for us when we have no clue what happened to it we're uploading the videos and that type and that little recording is gone until somebody makes a comment and says where's row eight and row nine and so on and we're like i have no clue and i have to go back to the video and see what's row eight or row nine anyway so you do your 20 or your 18 or your 16 depending on the length you'd like your bow tie then you turn around and you go up again row, um, chain two or three for some of you and then one per space again and then you just do double crochet. Now, if you want to make it um, sticking out like a 3D, then you would grab the back loops only. And that will, uh, you know, make it more 3D looking, you know, by grabbing the back loops. Gives that nice little effect up front. I didn't do it on this one, but I have created these rugs already. And I have done it on other rugs, and it's very nice. I think I was just too lazy to do on this one because the thread is so thick and I'm just like really tired of that thread. It's taking a lot of uh, a lot of my patience and strength out of my fingers and arms. So you'd come all the way to the last one. And then again, you turn around and again, chain two or three. And then again, you go in and do your double crochets until you have six rows. Okay, once you have the six rows, you cut your thread and proceed again with the rest of the video. Okay, so very simple is that. It's just one square that we're making exactly like we have here. This is just one square. And I did single with um, all the way around with the black just to make it stand. Everything else is there on the video except for this part in the beginning. Okay. Okay, you guys. So I've done six rows of the double crochet for the bow because then with the black one we're gonna tie it here on the center like that now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do single crochets all the way around to close up that bow tie you don't have to do it if you don't want to you could leave it as is but i want to close it up a little bit more so basically, just grab anywhere. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to grab a specific corner. So I'm coming in with the black. Obviously, I did a, a slip stitch knot. And I'm going to do singles all the way around. So where I have um, the double crochet, I'm going to do the single. If I need to do two singles per double crochet, then I will. If, it, if I need to do only one, then I will. You see how it uh, plays out for you guys if you need to do two or one double crochet. Try to hide my leftover thread that I have there. So I'm going to try to see two singles. If I find it's too much, then I'll do only one. I don't want to leave big gaps on it either. So, okay, and I'm going to do this all the way around. And if you find that maybe you can do one in between, let's say one double crochet in the center, let's try this way so it doesn't be too much of a tight. So, one double crochet where one single where the double crochet is. And one where it connects the rows with the double crochet. I'm going to try to see if I can do it this way. Or even, yeah. Whatever way looks best, right? We always try to find a way. So, yeah, I'm going to do one inside of the double crochet and one in between the rows. I think we're okay this way just like that okay I'll meet you at the end 
just want to tell you when you get to the corner do one inside and then uh, you can do actually two or three if you have to just to get the uh, corner properly in so I'm going to do um, two to be sure that this corner will look firm do I have the right no I don't good heavens no wonder why I'm having a hard time I had the wrong hook I had size six hook not good okay and then just turn your pattern and then come where you have your double crochets right in the center of the double crochet I didn't want to come in between because I don't want to leave it uh, a gap a space a hole where the double crochets are okay so I'm coming right in between the double crochets all right so I'll meet you at the end okay you guys so I pretty much finished doing all the way around uh, singles I'm also doing the little squares and uh, not squares round circles here with singles so my big one I have eight singles on a six chain and my small one I have um, six singles on a small so very simple I'm gonna instead of doing a chain on the small one I do a um, um, magic circle okay the other one the big ones I did a chain so I'm just going to do a small one of six six singles I mean we all know how to do singles right and then I'm just going to uh, tuck in the loose ends in between the stitches and then it will be glued onto the bow tie okay and then I'll show you how we're gonna finish off the bow tie by tying in the center okay so I'm just gonna finish this off I'm gonna close it with slip stitch pull my thread tuck in the loose ends and ready to be glued okay you guys so before we even decide to glue them we have to tuck them well uh, tie them together so you just because this is thick thread remembering that so it's a little bit harder to but this is a rug so it's not a doily it's supposed to be hard and then just um, go around with your with your thread a few times because you want to make sure that uh, maybe I should have pulled more gotta pull more into here to make sure whoops knocking everything down ain't I oh well it is what it is okay and you gotta give it enough tightness on it to make sure that it's going to you know and before you close off anything you want to make sure that you have it properly the design the way you want to so you can have it nice and I don't want to be off camera but and you got to give it a nice nice tie there so it can look like a nice little bow tie right So just tie it, go around a few times, then we'll tie it in the back, you know, and then we'll tuck in between, give it a little bit of glue in between, and we're good to go. So I'm just going to bring this thread back here. Okay, so I think I'm good. So I'm going to tie mine in the back. Give it a nice tie in the back here. I'm going to cut my thread to make sure that you got to give it got to make sure that it's pretty much center before you close off completely just make sure that you have your design exactly where you want it to be because then 
this will be glued into the pattern and then it will be too late if you don't have it all fixed fixed up right so I'm going to give it a few knots before I crisscross it over two in between here now that's extremely tight yeah crisscross it here I'm gonna give it another tightness and then it's gonna be glued so it's not gonna it's not gonna go anywhere I'm gonna tuck this underneath here because then I can cut the axis off right And there you go. And then I'll cut the excess off and glue the rest right in. Then it's just perfect. Now my glue should be hot because I had opened it up. So now... get you guys here so I'm going to put my my uh, bigger one off top here and I'm going to compress and sometimes it doesn't have to be a whole lot but because this is thicker thread you gotta you gotta put enough it's a rug right it's not a delicate doily. I'll blow on it a little bit. Just so everything can stick in place, right? So I'm going to have to um, stop for this video here and then the rug itself it will be a complete different video because then it's too much all in one video and I can't do that. So now here's the, the opportunity for you to put uh, your transparent glue in the areas that you think needs the, I put too much here, needs the glue at the edges where you've gotten your thread off and things like that. Now we should be okay. And then you go ahead and do the other one so I'll pose put the other one like here we don't want it to be all lined up right so I'll just a little bit here like that and then do the same thing on the other side so this pretty much does it for this video. Stay tuned for the rug so we can complete the years and the bow tie together. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.